The H-1B guy here, and today, the H-1B guy comments, DHS moves to fixed time period and new extension of stay policy. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the H-1B guy channel here on YouTube. It helps me to produce more content like this for you. I also wanted to mention that the H-1B guy offers a variety of consulting services. If I can help you or your employer determine your case, please reach out. I'd love to hear how I can help. Posted on September 25th, 2020 on the Federal Register by the Department of Homeland Security titled, Establishing a Fixed Time Period of Admission and an Extension of Stay Procedure for Non-Immigrant Academic Students, Exchange Visitors, and Representatives of Foreign Information Media. Today, Monday, October 26th, is the final day for public comment. As of the time of this writing and of this video, there are over 28,000 comments. I wanted to comment on these proposed revisions today as we continue to see last minute sweeping changes by President Trump's administration to non-immigrant visas as we currently know. Before I get started, I do want to reiterate that I am all for policy that will help eliminate fraud and an intentional overstay. This public notice is well over 100 pages long. I'm not going to comment on all of it, but I do want to highlight and comment on a few of my key takeaways. Starting with the application for admission and F or J non-immigrant status, quote, Aliens applying for an admission in either F or J status who under this proposal would be eligible to be admitted for the length of time indicated by the program end date do not exceed four years unless they are subject to a two-year admission plus a period of 30 days following their program end date to prepare for departure or to otherwise seek to obtain lawful authorization to remain in the United States. Aliens applying for admission to engage in post-completion or STEM OPT. The proposed four-year period of admission would not apply to all F and J non-immigrants. DHS believes a shorter period, up to two years, would be appropriate for a subset of F and J population due to heightened concerns related to fraud, abuse, and national security. So we see the biggest changes from this public notice are directed towards the F and J visas. F and J visas will now be issued in either 24 or 48 month increments plus 30 days buffer to exit the U.S. I'm not well versed on the average time it takes to earn an advanced U.S. degree, but I'd be willing to bet it's not less than 24 months. Seems like 36 months should have been the minimum for advanced U.S. degrees. Moving on to extension of stay, EOS. Quote, this proposed rule would not create a new form for an EOS application. However, USCIS is in the process of transitioning from paper-based to electronic form processing, and some form names and numbers may change. While DHS plans to update existing forms allowing F, J, and I non-immigrants to apply for an EOS with USCIS, DHS believes it would be more efficient to replace references to specific form names and numbers throughout the current regulations with generally applicable language, specifically extension requests and the manner and on the form prescribed by USCIS together with the required fees and all evidence specified in the applicable provisions and in the form instructions, including any biometrics required. I want to make sure that this point is not missed. USCIS is in the process of transitioning from paper-based to electronic form processing. As I've been commenting on since the launch of this channel, USCIS needs to move to electronic processing across the board. They proved in the fiscal year 2021 HCAP lottery that they have the capabilities to process employment-based non-immigrant visas electronically. Here we see proof that a full electronic adoption is in process. Going back to the notice, quote, regarding applications for employment authorization for F1s and J2s, CBP does not adjudicate applications for employment authorization. 
USCIS would continue processing any such applications, notwithstanding a departure, and if the application is approved, USCIS will not issue an EAD with validity date that exceeds the fixed date of admission provided in the alien at the POE. For example, an F-1 student wishing to engage in post-completion or STEM OPT extension would need to file both an EOS application and an application for employment authorization. Where the alien had departed the United States before his or her application are adjudicated, USCIS would not consider the employment authorization application abandoned. I just wanted to comment on this as it appears that an extension of stay and an ED application will have to be filed in conjunction once the degree is completed in order to obtain work authorization. I'm also interpreting this language to allow individuals to depart the U.S. with pending employment applications and they will not be considered abandoned if their case is approved while they're located outside of the U.S. Moving on to transition period for F and J non-immigrants. Quote, regarding pending applications for employment authorization during the transition period, aliens in F status who are subject to the transition and who are seeking post-completion OPT and STEM OPT employment authorization would be authorized to remain in the United States while the application is pending with USCIS if, one, they are in the United States on the effective date of the final rule with the admission for DS, two, they properly filed an application for employment authorization, and three, their application is pending on the final rule's effective date. Unless otherwise advised by USCIS, they would not have to file for an EOS or refile an application for employment authorization. So this will allow F and J visa holders who have their EAD applications pending to remain in the U.S. past their final rule date. Moving on to admission for a fixed time period. DHS therefore proposes that E-Verify participation warrants a four-year admission period for students of those schools subject to other limitations on admission that may apply. Conversely, there is less confidence in schools that are unwilling to do all they can to ensure they have a legal workforce to support students' academic programs by participating in E-Verify. Accordingly, DHS proposes that it would monitor whether students of such schools maintain status more frequently by limiting their admission period to two years. This is an interesting proposal. So if the school participates in E-Verify for their employees, DHS will allow a four-year admission for the proposal student, but only a two-year admission for those attending schools who do not participate in E-Verify. But note, it is subject to other limitations. Back to the notice, quote, DHS proposes to retain the cap gap provisions automatically granting for a certain period of time the extension of F1 students stay and grant of employment authorizations for aliens who are the beneficiaries of timely filed H1B cap subject petitions with an employment start date of October 1st and requesting a change of status. Under current regulations, the automatic cap gap extension is valid only until October 1st of the fiscal year for which H-1B status is being requested. To account for this operational issue, DHS is proposing to revise and to provide an automatic extension of F-1 status and post-completion OPT is applicable until April 1st of the fiscal year for which the H-1B petition is filed. However, if the F-1 students change of status is still pending at the end of the cap gap period, then his or her employment authorization would terminate on March 31st, and the applicant would no longer be employment authorized on this basis as of April 1st. DHS is also proposing to clarify the cap gap provision does not authorize employment for dependents who seek change of status from F2 status to H1B or H4 status. DHS believes that these changes would result in more flexibility for both students and the department and would help to avoid disruption to U.S. employers who are lawfully employing F-1 students while a qualifying H-1B petition is pending. However, DHS is concerned with the impacts of this provision on U.S. workers and students, especially if it would result in increased competition for certain jobs and invites comments from the public on this issue. I really like this proposed change. 
This will allow for a cap gap extension from October 1st to April 1st of the same fiscal year if change of status is still pending, aka the HCAP case was selected but not approved. Benefits both the employee and the employer. And finishing up with the notice, quote, DHS is proposing an automatic extension of off-campus employment authorization for up to 180 days during the pendency of the EOS application. DHS believes a 180-day automatic extension of employment authorization would help alleviate the severe economic hardship and avoid a disruption in their employment especially given the fact that an employment authorization document is required and frequency at which these students must submit an application for employment authorization. I also like this proposed change, 180 days automatic extension while EOS is pending. As I've previously commented on, EAD requires a card in hand in order to have work authorization. The way I'm interpreting it is that this proposed change would allow for an automatic extension of employment without card in hand, benefiting both the employee and the employer. It'll be very interesting to see if any of the proposed changes are modified based on the 28,000 plus comments as of the time of this video. But we'll continue to monitor this public notice as it moves forward. For the full post, please check out the h1bguy.com. If you haven't already, I'd like to ask you to please like this video, please subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube, and click the bell for notifications so that you're notified anytime we post a new video here to this channel. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch my content. I just really appreciate your support. The H1B Guy. Your global source for all things H-1B.